Hello friends, this is Dr. Naveen Agrawal. I am an interventional cardiologist practicing at Valsad and Vapi district of Gujarat in India. My topic for today's discussion is regarding whether a routine check angiography should be performed to confirm the fact whether the stent is patent or not and what are the indications when we need to perform an angiography to confirm the status of the stent after an, after an angioplasty. This is what we are going to be discussing today. It's a very interesting and a useful topic because a lot of people have a query regarding the fact uh, whether the stent is working or not and what are the indications when uh, angiography should be performed, why exactly the doctor is performing an angiography and why he is not performing an angiography after a uh, angioplasty procedure, when exactly should he be performing an angiography. These are the points which we will be discussing in this topic. Uh, the people who are new to my channel, I would request them to subscribe to my channel as this gives us a lot of inspiration and motivation to continue the good work as we are doing now. Jo log mere channel pe Hindi bashi, unke liye content Hindi mein, bhasha mein bhi available hai. To aap uh, link mein description box mein chhod dunga. Aap chahe to is video ko Hindi bhasha mein bhi dekh sakte hain. Coming back to the topic, my topic is regarding check angiography after a routine angioplasty. So uh, first of all, we need to understand what is an angioplasty. Angioplasty is a procedure wherein we open up a coronary vessel or the uh, blockage in a coronary vessel by putting a, a stent in there. First, we pass a wire across the blockage in the coronary vessel. Then we dilate the lesion with a balloon and then we put a stent, which is basically a metallic scaffold or a uh, spring sort of a structure, which is put inside the vessel so that the vessel does not recoil after the balloon is withdrawn. Or secondly, the uh, dirt or the muck which has been pushed aside by the balloon that does not come back inside the vessel. So that is the basic purpose of the stent. But stent can develop two sorts of a problem. First of all, it can develop sudden clotting, which you can understand in a simple language that it is some sort of a reaction which the body develops to the stent and the vessel clots and suddenly gets occluded within the first few days after angioplasty. Usually stent thrombosis is seen within the first 5 to 10 days or 15 days after an angioplasty. That is the maximum time period when a stent can suddenly get clotted. And uh, usually that usually presents with a severe chest pain similar to that of a heart attack and patient develops significant ECG changes which suggest the presence of a stent clotting. Uh, secondly, the stent can develop a slow reblockage which is usually uh, seen in 5 to 6 percent cases after uh, an angioplasty in a, uh, in a drug eluting stent. And the maximum incidence of the stent retinosis is seen in the first six months after an angioplasty. Usually, this presents with uh, exertional symptoms like exertional chest pain, exertional breathlessness, exertional dyspnea, and sometimes the patient can also have a heart attack at this point of time. Routine check angiography is not done. The reason is that the incidence of stent clotting is only 1% and incidence of stent reblockage is only 5%. So you should not perform an angiography on 100 patients after an angioplasty just to find out those one or two patients which are developing problem. And that too, if at all, we appropriately screen and find out the patients where it, who are more likely to have a stent thrombosis or stent resonosis. In these patients, we should ideally perform an angiography because the chances of finding a problem in these patients are much higher if at all we appropriately screen our patients rather than doing a routine check angiography for each and every patient. Suppose we are suspecting a stent thrombosis. The likelihood of the patient developing stent thrombosis is maximum in the first 10 to 15 days. Future also it can develop only if the patient misses out on the medicines or is resistant to the medicines. But the chance is only 1%. Usually the patient develops severe sudden chest pain with sweating, diaphoresis and uh, they, there are significant ECG changes on the baseline ECG which suggests the occurrence of a new heart attack. Or on the echo also if you see that uh, the patient has some new regional wall motion abnormalities or the pump function has significantly deteriorated after an angioplasty which ideally should improve after an angioplasty. If these are the findings which are there, you can do a stress test also if at all you feel it is necessary. If these are the findings or the cardiac enzymes which suggest a new heart attack, these are raised, then these findings would suggest that the patient is having a stent thrombosis and the patient requires an urgent check angiography. Most likely in uh, majority of the cases, it's the ECG changes which is the deciding factor which uh, suggests that the patient requires a check angiography if at all the patient is having significant chest pain or symptoms after an angioplasty. Secondly, the chances of the patient developing restenosis is maximum in the first five to six months because restenosis is basically related to the healing process of the stent because once the, you put the stent a healing process starts to develop inside the vessel and layer by layer multiple cell uh, formation occurs inside the stent 
which slowly and uh, steadily causes restenosis inside the stent the maximum incidence of restenosis is seen in 4 to 6 months after an angioplasty the chances only 5 to 7% in a drug eluting stent these patients usually will have shortness of breath lethargy fatigue exertional palpitations exertional dyspnea deterioration of pump function deterioration of symptoms as compared to what it was immediately after an angioplasty if at all a patient comes to us with these sort of a symptoms we usually do an ecg we do an echo if there are no significant differences we can do a treadmill test to see whether the patient is having a significant ec changes on a treadmill and if at all it is positive or if at all we have a significant suspicion that the patient is having a uh, stent related issue then we do a check angio and uh, if at all we appropriately screen the patient the chances of picking up a stent resources are higher uh, in these cases although the fallacy is that we might miss out on a few cases maybe one or one out percent of case might be missed if we do not do a check angio for all the cases but usually the chances of the patient having significant restenosis is only 5 to 7% and that too only 1 or 2% patient of this patient of these people will only require a repeat angioplasty so even if we miss out on maybe half a percent of this patient it usually doesn't matter and majority of the patients if at all they have a significant restenosis they will have at least some symptoms very very unlikely that the patient will have absolutely no symptoms no problems and the stent would be restenosis although it is still possible but is unlikely so uh, that is why internationally it is recommended that a routine angiography uh, protocol is not done the reason being is that angiography is not a completely safe procedure every time we perform an angiography the artery which we puncture gets the endothelium of the artery gets damaged so multiple times we just keep doing an angiography just to check whether the stent is functioning or not or for every symptom which for which the patient is coming to us for example he's having a muscular chest pain some shortness of breath some sweating some problem is there after an angioplasty for every damn symptom if we start doing an angiography multiple times puncture will have to be done in a radial and femoral artery and after multiple punctures the artery gets damaged permanently and uh, if actually in future the patient does require a repeat procedure the chances of us being able to perform a successful procedure from the same arterial axis will be much lesser if at all we have already punctured the artery multiple times just to see an angiography that is why check angiography is only done when at all it is absolutely indicated or we are at least 50% sure that we are likely to find some new problem inside the patient that that is the reason why we do a check angiography sometimes there is also a possibility that after an angioplasty a patient suddenly develops a new lesion that new lesion is usually seen because of the fact that whenever we put a catheter inside a vessel and we pass wires and pass balloon the endothelium of the vessel even at the lesion uh, area which is not having the disease at uh, the time of angioplasty that area also can get dam damaged and a new lesion can develop very rapidly sometimes the damage in the less vessel layers and not is not picked up on a routine uh, angioplasty procedure and later on the patient suddenly comes up with a new lesion at a new site that can be uh, chances is less than 1% but still that is practically possible also if that is also seen the patient will come to you with new onset shortness of breath or a fresh heart attack or uh, exertional dyspnea exertional palpitation and similar symptoms ecg echo and treadmill will likely uh, is more very likely to pick up these changes and then we do a angiography for these patients routine angiography is not done because of the fact that it is very cumbersome very invasive and is likely to harm the patient much more uh, likely than to provide benefit to the patient if at all we appropriately screen our patients and select the cases where actually an angiography is required it is much better for the patient most cost effective for the patient and the results will be better uh, only 1 to 2 percent of the patients where a stent has been previously deployed require a repeat angioplasty after uh, restenosis is developed because the criteria is that the patient should be having significant symptoms in terms of breathlessness chest pain or uh, effort intolerance and the blockage should be more than 70% if at all that is positive then the repeat plasty might be required but the chances only 1 to 2% sometimes if the blockage is very extensive very diffuse there are chances that the patient might require a repeat uh, might require a bypass surgery also because if the body is not accepting the stent and a re diffuse restenosis has occurred then high chances that the patient might develop another restenosis if we put another stent at the same site so the patient might be referred for a bypass surgery also but all this is decided only on the basis of the check angio uh, check angio although is sometimes required but is not done routinely because of logistic reasons i hope i was able to uh, appropriately clear out my topic why exactly what exactly is a check angio what are the indications for doing a check angio why it is not done on a routine basis uh, because of logistic issues what are the logistic issues 
and what exactly are we expecting to find if at all we do a check and on these cases and uh, how exactly do we manage it this is what we have discussed in this topic and i hope that i was able to make my topic clear the uh, purpose of my channel is that i, I wish to create uh, make a scientific awareness amongst the masses so that they can make appropriate decisions about their patient and they can understand the disease process so that they can better manage their patients and better take care of their patients uh, usually for this sort of information people are dependent on the doctors and their friends and relatives to make this uh, knowledge and information available to them but doctors because of time constraint may or may not be able to uh, deliver all the information to you and friends and relatives usually uh, have a half correct information which if at all you follow uh, for your patients it might sometimes be, be detrimental to the interests of your patient if at all you like the concept of my channel i would request you to like my uh, video subscribe to my channel if you and if you feel that the content of the videos is uh, useful for your friends and relatives you can share the link of the videos with them uh, the people who are new to my channel i would request them to subscribe to my channel as this gives us a lot of inspiration and motivation also if you have still any questions and queries regarding to the topic or if you want us to cover some more topics in future videos you can mention about that in the description box below or in the chat box below and we in future will be able to uh, we'll try to take up those topics and also make videos on them as well so this is dr nabeen agrawal and i'm signing off and i give you a very uh, thankful and i'm very thankful to you sir, that you have seen the video up till the end and i hope that i was able to make the concept of check angiography after an angioplasty clear to you if at all you still have any doubts feel free to discuss those topics and in future we'll be happy to take up these topics if you feel it is uh, worthy of discussion the people who are new to my channel please subscribe to my channel thank you